microphones turned on. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to, oh, I should let you say it back to me. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, my goodness. What a great uh, group of people we have here today. A special welcome to our youth group that spent the night here last night from Hutchinson, Minnesota, and they are on their way to Alamosa. Is that correct? So welcome and thanks for being here today. Pastor Ken is on a little bit of a vacation trip and he will be back in the office on Tuesday. But today we welcome Pastor Lanny and he will be doing our sermon today and our communion. So um, with that, please, um, we welcome you. And we have the friendship books that are at the edge of the pews and if you will Sign in and then pass them down. That would be great. And Andrew. Good morning. Is this on? Is it on? Can you hear me? Awesome. Okay. Um, just a few things for youth. One thing to be praying for us this week. Uh, on Tuesday, Pastor Ken and I actually... It's kind of misleading to say Pastor Ken will be in the office Tuesday. You didn't know this. But we are headed, uh, we're doing a little confirmation day camp with some of our students who've been through confirmation or going into. So just be praying for us uh, on Tuesday. And just kind of a note on that, if you have students or are a student that is looking to start confirmation in the fall, please let me know. We, we we're starting to plan for the fall. Uh, the other thing for youth and for young adults especially is this Thursday we're headed to Elitch Gardens in Denver. It's an amusement and water park. Uh, if you could please sign up today. I hope many of you can, can make it. Uh, we're going to spend the whole day, great time of fellowship together and fun. So uh, I would encourage you to sign up today um, or reach out to me if you have any questions. So that's all I have all right. today. Thank you. Thank Marianne. you. A couple of announcements. We have the senior social on Wednesday. And then next Sunday, we will be outdoors again. Hopefully the weather will cooperate like it did last Sunday. And it is our way to celebrate our nation's birth as well as all of our birthdays. So um, this will be led by our social ministry committee and the donations will be given to the Rocky Mountain Fisher House. And bring a gift of coins for how many years you are have been on this earth and so um, you can bring pennies you can bring quarters you can bring 50 cent pieces and if some of you have some of those dollar coins um, please feel free to bring whatever coins you would like for that and you can see the other things um, that are in on the um, bulletin in sort and with that we are going to start our service with a brief order for confession and that is found in the front of our Ren Hibben books, page 94. And if you will stand, if you are able, and face the baptismal font, please. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, 
our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. And our gathering song, the words are in our bulletin this morning. started, I wanted to say also thank you to the people who helped provide some breakfast items this morning for our group. So thank you to those who were able to do that. We continue our worship service on page 138 in the front of your red hymn book. And today we will speak the Kyrie. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. We continue with the prayer of the day, which is printed in your bulletin.
Let us pray. O oh God, our defender, storms rage about us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us all from unbelief. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated, and will the children come forward for our children's sermon? Come on down. How's it going? Good. Here they come. How are you guys this morning? So did you get who these people are? So they're from a church in Minnesota called Christ the King Lutheran Church. And there's, I think there's 34 high school students and seven adults who are taking like about 10 days out of their summer to go serve. Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> okay. Thank you for introducing him. Welcome. <laughs> um, so they are taking about 10 days of their summer. They're going to be down in Alamosa serving and being the hands and feet of Jesus to some people down there. We actually have a group from our church. I don't know if you know this, but we're going to Kentucky in July. And so one day when you're older, you could have an opportunity to do something like that. That's pretty cool. Um, one thing that uh, we have in the gospel reading I wanted to ask you about. Do you know how many hairs you have on your head? Any guesses? A bunch? Like, yeah, a thousand? A million? Okay, trillion, wow. 100? Infinity? Wow. Okay, those are some good guesses. You know, I did a little bit of research on the internet. You know, I Googled it. And do you know that the average person has about 100,000 hairs on their head? I thought it was also interesting if you have red hair, you have less, usually, about 90,000. And if you have blonde hair, lighter hair, it's usually more, about 140,000. That was pretty interesting. Uh, but, you know who actually knows in detail how many hairs you have on your head? God does. So in our gospel reading today, and in, I, I think probably in the sermon, we're going to hear a little bit, we've talked about how we might be afraid. When we follow Jesus, some people might make fun of us, we might experience some hard things. But Jesus tells us not to be afraid, because our Heavenly Father knows and cares for us, He loves us, he cares for the sparrows. He cares for us. He knows us so well. He knows even how many hairs you have on your head. So you might be at about 100,000. I might be about 50,000 now. I'm losing it. <laughs> oh, yeah. We aren't even talking about those yet. But it's pretty amazing to think how and how much detail God knows us and loves us and cares for us. Uh, would you pray with me? We're going to pray specifically for this group as they go and serve this week. All right? Jesus, we thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great love for us. We thank you for your care for us, that you know everything about us, and that you, are, uh, you provide for us. And we pray for this group uh, from this church as they go and they serve. I pray, Lord, that you would bless the work of their hands and that they would also have great conversations about who they serve. Thank you for the kids. I pray that you grant them a great week this week. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. You can go back to your seat. <coughs> And thanks for bringing friends. Awesome. Our first reading from Jeremiah. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a, repro a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, 
Then within me, there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retributions upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. Our second reading is from Romans. What then are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was, was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he saves, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is our reading. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 10. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them. For nothing is covered up that will be not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my father in heaven. But whoever denies me for, before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Let's pray, beloved. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that you have called us here together and that your spirit moves and lives among us. Open up our hearts to hear your word and my lips to speak your word aright that we might hear and believe and trust in your Son, Jesus Christ, and live for him. It is in his name we pray. Amen. How strong are you in your faith? This reading today is uh, one of those readings that kind of sits in the middle of this big, long discord by Christ. Uh, discourse, not discord. And um, in this whole section, uh, the part that we always like to tune into is, do not be afraid, your, your life is of more value than many sparrows. But the whole section above that actually sort of pulls us into, well, what are we, why are we supposed to be afraid of? Because, you know, you know, I'm not being chased by wolves right now. I'm not a, don't feel like a sheep, and so on. But the whole section starts out with sentences like, behold, I'm sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. He's sending his disciples out to serve him, to minister to him, to proclaim his name and to live for him, to stand up for him in the world and a world that is not necessarily friendly. We love that part about even the hairs of your head are numbered and fear not you are of more value than many sparrows, but like it or not, these words are surrounded by statements like you'll be dragged before governors and kings. I haven't been dragged before governor and king. In other words, like brother will deliver brother to death and children will rise against their parents and put them to death. I haven't seen that either. It's, so it's hard for us to kind of get a feel for what Jesus is trying to communicate to his disciples here. He's sending them out into a world that is hostile to Jesus. And he has called us as his disciples to stand up in his name and proclaim and praise him. And it's in that context that he's saying, don't be afraid. So the question is, how does one stand up and proclaim Christ in a hostile culture? It's common for us to say we'll stick up for ourselves and for Jesus Christ. And there are many that go out there and do that, but they do it with the wrong spirit. Because as you know, the world was hostile to Christ and he walked willingly to the cross and gave up his power and gave up his strength. And he gave it all up for the entire world in need of his grace and of his love. The fact of the matter is, if we try to defend ourselves and lift up ourselves with the same rage or anger or doubt or shame or fear that the world brings into the situation against us, we've lost the effectiveness of our ministry. Because even though we might have invective and foul words thrown at us as Christ's people and as his witnesses, the world will say, if they look at us and we respond in kind, they'll say, well, they're not any different at all, are they? The call of Christ is a call to give up all that, as he did. It says in the scriptures that he willingly went to the cross And even the, those who were mocking him on the cross were saying, well, if he is the Son of God, let him come down from the cross. But those who knew, knew that he, if he had called on 12 legions of angels to come down and deliver him, they would have come. But he didn't do that. Because he had you and me in his mind because he knew he had to let go of all the divine power of heaven for the sake of bringing you and me and the hurting world back to himself. 
because he had all of us in his mind as those nails were piercing his palms and his heel as the spear was driven into his side. As he was saying the words, it is finished. He had you in his heart and his mind. He gave up his power and his desire to probably on that human side of him, there's probably a desire to just let it all go. But he didn't. He let it all go up to God. And he put it in the Father's hands because he knew who he was and he knows and he knew who his Father was. How do we witness in a hostile world? With the same love and grace that Christ ministered into our lives. With the same gospel message. Jesus says, do not fear, because you're, every hair on your head, or lack of them thereof, are numbered. And you are more valuable than many sparrows. You see, what people do not understand is that those who rage against the church and who are, are so angry when we bring the name of Jesus Christ and his love into their world, they actually are living in a greater fear than you or I could ever know. Because they don't know peace of Christ. They don't have the foundation that we have that says, I don't care if I am dragged before governors or kings or nations. I don't care what anybody says to me. I have a good Lord, Jesus Christ in heaven, and he is my Lord, and he will stand by me and with me and in me. And I will be able by his spirit to speak the words that God himself sent not by my own power or strength, but by his. As Paul says, when I become weak, then I am strong. Because that's when God's power has its greatest power in us. There is a book written by uh, a man named Paul Tournay. It's called The Strong and the Weak. And if you ever have an opportunity to read it, I recommend that you do. He also wrote another one called Guilt and Grace. He was a counselor in Switzerland. And in his many years of counseling with all the people that came to him from various backgrounds, what he found out in his ministry to them was this, that those who go around proclaiming like that they're strong and try to abuse others with their power are actually weak and afraid inside. And if we minister to them in that way, it opens up an opportunity for Christ to break into that life with the lightning power of his love. It opens up the opportunity for them to hear him through us, to see our kindness and gentleness when faced with cruelty is something the world is not familiar with and that speaks volumes about the nature of our ministry here on earth as Christ calls us every single day. Because even though we might have invective thrown at us in Christ's people as his witnesses, we're not going to return that back upon your head. We will not return evil for evil, but we will return good for evil. And we will praise our God because we are not afraid, because we will stand up, because we know the Lord whom we serve. And no matter what you do to this body on earth, we know what we have in Christ.
I don't know if you remember the news story about 21 Egyptian Christians that were killed uh, by ISIS about eight years ago in, in northern Libya. And we heard the news stories about their brutal deaths. We heard about the terrible things that happened to them. We heard about the loss of their, that their families suffered and so on. You know what? What we didn't hear about is this. What the news stories didn't tell you is that while they were dying, they were singing a hymn to Christ on their knees as they died. Unafraid. Because they know, knew whom they served. What you never heard is that the money that was raised for the Egyptian Christian church to build their, their families' homes in their village, and when they finished building the homes in their village, there was enough left over to build homes for the mo local Muslims in that village. It so touched the hearts of the Muslims that many came to believe in Egypt. You see, the gospel of Christ is more powerful than the worst the world can throw at us. It's a sand, a grain of sand, compared to the ocean of God's love. And it is in that love that we need to look at a hurting world around us and say, yes, Lord, I will proclaim your name. I will heal in your name. I will love in your name. I will reach out in your name. And I will stand firm in your name, Lord Christ. Because I know who it is I serve. I serve the good and loving Lord Jesus Christ. And he stands in me and by me and for me. And no one will snatch me out of his hand. Because to him, I am worth more than many sparrows. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. with the Apostles' Creed found on page 105 at the front of your red hymnal.
I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. Once again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, in obedience to your claim upon us, we give ourselves to you this day, all that we are, all that we have, completely for your using. Take us and use us up as you will, where you will, when you will, and with whom you will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we call to mind before you all those whom it would be easy to forget, the homeless, the sick, the aged, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit and to turn their sorrow into joy. We especially pray for Steve, Kelly, Brian, Margaret, Marge, Dave, Jerry, Keith, and Duane. We also remember in our prayers our missionary Didi and his wife Serafina, and be with those whom we mention quietly in our hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Lord, in your mercy, Direct us, O Lord, in all our doings with your most gracious favor and further us with your continual help that in all our works, begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name and finally, by your mercy, obtain everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. Your God, our Father, you see your children growing up in an uncertain and confusing world. Show them that your ways give more life than the ways of the world, and that following you is better than chasing after selfish goals. Help them to take failure not as a measure of their worth, but as an opportunity for a new start. Give them strength to hold their faith in you and to keep alive their joy in your creation. And today, Lord, we especially pray for this youth group and their sponsors on their mission trip to Alamosa. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share the peace with one another.
Please stand. And we continue with the offering prayer in your bulletin. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels and with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have everlasting life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. For in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you, this do for the remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty. Not as we ought, but as we are able, we ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit, bless us, your servants, and those and these your gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with the heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Come and receive his precious body and blood. Please rise. The true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith into life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of your precious body and blood, this gift of life in your mercy. Strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of and in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you peace. dismissal if you've noticed there is playground equipment on our new playground yes however it's not quite ready for people to be on it or children so um, but very exciting praise to God for all of the work that has been done on that and all of your contributions so as we end with our dismissal I will say go in peace and you will say serve the Lord Oh, wait, no. I say go in peace and serve the Lord, and you say thanks be to God. <laughs> Don't tell Pastor Ken I made a mistake. All right. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.